So I've watched a lot of WLED install videos and nearly all of them just show a bare ESP32 board connected to a five volt LED strip without a level shifter. So the level shifter is there to up the data signal from the ESP32 from 3.3 volts to five volts. So I made this video to show you how to make a WLED controller with a cheap ESP32 board, including a level shifter, using a 24 volt power supply and individual segment addressable LED uh, strips, the ones I used at FCOB, because uh, they look cool with the diffuser built in, uh, and using only parts available in Britain. So here you can see the various parts, the circuit board, the voltage converter, the ESP32, and then the level shifter with some wires. Uh, the first thing to do is to assemble the headers, the male and female headers onto the board. What I do is uh, pull out one of the pins with the pliers and then use wire cutters to uh, snip off the, the remaining section. So this, uh, this ESP32 has 38 pins, 19 each side, and then I'm just temporarily putting those into the uh, prototype board there. For the level shifter, uh, the, this male headers need to be attached and female, so I put those two together here. Uh, again, take the pin out, snip it to the right size. I'm holding on to the piece there that uh, is going to come off so that it doesn't ping all over the place. I find that works better. Uh, and then you've got uh, the various female headers necessary there for the level shifter and then the ESP32. The next step is to add uh, the power connector, which is a screw terminal, a little blue thing. I found that if you put that at a diagonal angle, that works on this board. And then use blue tack, or yellow tack in this case, to attach the um, temporarily the female headers to the prototype board. And then solder those 38 pins to that board. If soldering seems complicated, I'll link a tutorial in the description because a few weeks ago I couldn't solder a thing. And don't forget to solder the power connector too. That's just showing the board there. Take off the uh, blue tack. And then do the same for the level shifter female headers, um, which you can see there. Still got the male headers, headers in there. And then soldering the male headers onto that level shifter um, so that uh, it can be plugged in and out, the same as the SP32 in case there's any problems with it. Put all that together, so uh, push the ESP32 in, push the level shifter in, and you've got the beginnings of the board, and then it's onto wiring the circuit. Here's the circuit diagram I made based on the ones from WLED. Uh, it's missing the earth wire on the mains power. It shows the 240 volts power going into the book converter, then out at five volts to the board. And then the data line is up to from 3.3 volts to five volts by the level shifter. And everything results in three wires out to the LED strip. I don't show fuses or a capacitor in this video, though they're likely good ideas. I wanted the ESP32 and level shifter together on a board and removable, but you could use jumper wires attached to the header pins and Wago connectors if you prefer. Um, first of all, I use a little marker pen to mark two different power rails, a 3.3 volt on the top and a 5 volt on the bottom. So taking the short wire connectors uh, to wire the 5 volt power on the bottom rail, negative and positive to the bottom of the level shifter, and then the 3 volt, the 3.3 volt power to the top, uh, sold those connections on. and then snip off any excess lead there, as you can see. So that's the level shifter powered, uh, providing the high voltage and the low voltage. Um, and the next thing is to power the ESP32 from the five volt rail, so that just connects the appropriate pins on the ESP32 to the positive and negative of the five volt power rail. Taking that ESP32 out of the socket for now so that I can then uh, put some more wires in. The, the, this size of prototype board doesn't allow much space above and below so you have to use the, the space in between and I did that using, um, using short wires. So here I'm soldering those uh, power leads from the bottom, the positive and negative power leads, uh, and I'm soldering them on the top. So then taking some 22 EWG solid core wire 
um, just clear in the workstation here a little bit first. This is wiring the 3.3 volt power rail from the ESP32 and preparing the data line coming off. Green is the data line going to the low voltage of the level shifter. So folding those back and then soldering those on the bottom of the prototype board. I think there are six things to solder here because there are three wires with two ends each. And the last thing to do here is to attach the data cable coming off uh, here to the left of the shot. Um, and that's just soldering a green wire to the data output of the level shifter. Here I briefly use a flux pen to help the solder flow where I want it. Um, I use a bit of tinning paste here to make the tip of the soldering iron nice and shiny. And then I get rid of any excess with the copper wire and then uh, solder it and snip off any excess using the blue tack to keep the wire in place. You can see here on the two that I was preparing that that circuit is complete. The next step is to just reduce the voltage output of the uh, book converter down to from 24 volts in to 5 volts out. You press the little button on the bottom right to set the output voltage and then use a screwdriver to go anti-clockwise to do that. And then flash the WLED onto the ESP32, which I'll just show quickly using the website. I installed the audio reactive version here so that I can add a microphone later, but you can go with the standard edition if that's better for you. Choose the port that it's on uh, via the USB connector, click to install WLED, uh, and that should all work. Now, it didn't quite work here. It went back to the install screen. There's nothing in the logs, it makes no sense. Uh, what I did was go back to that screen, press install, choose my device again, and rather than say install, it said connect to Wi-Fi. So then I typed in my SSID and password for the Wi-Fi. Uh, and then it gave me the option that I was expecting a few moments ago, which was to visit the device and access the web interface. Um, here, I like to set the DNS name of the WLED device rather than trying to remember its IP address on the network. And you'll see here that it's got 30 uh, LEDs set, but actually, the order for the strip I've got is RGB, not GRB, and uh, I have a hundred segments in the five meter FCOB LED strip that I've linked in the description. The next step is to use 18 AWG silicon wire for power cables. Uh, so here I'm stripping and preparing a number of power cables, um, particularly because I'm doing two devices here. Um, and you'll see that you need, I think, six for the various connections, but you'll see in a minute how that works. Uh, yeah, keep going until you run out of red and black wire. Uh, this is a uh, crimping tool to add connectors, solid connectors onto the end. This is how that works. So you put it onto the end of stranded wire and then squeeze the end to make that a good connection, which you can then push into terminal connector blocks uh, or other bits. Um, so this is if I'm not connecting it to the circuit board where those would be too big to go through the holes. And do that for all the power cables, various red and black power cables that I'm going to use for this project. This is the 24 volt power supply, so I'm connecting to the LED output. So this is outputting 24 volts from this power supply, 240 volts in on the left hand side. Uh, it's just using screw connectors. and connect that then to Wago connectors so that you can split the power between the controller, where will that go off to the book converter, and the LED strip itself, which will take the 24 volt power. So that allows you to, these three part Wago strips allow you to distribute the power both to the LED strip and the ESP32 acting as the WLED controller. So put those together. Uh, and then that lead will go into the book converter, which is already set to output five volts. So this is doing the 24 volts in uh, for the positive lead and then for the negative lead. And those five volts, uh, then you connect from the 
right hand side of the book converter if the display is the right way up and connect to the other end of those to the power terminals on the uh, prototype board that's got the ESP32 and that will provide it 5 volt power and provide uh, power to the controller. So with that all done, you're basically ready and to plug in and the everything should work. The LED strip should come on. Here you can see it's set to green. Uh, that's just a solid color initial setting. But you can set to different patterns. This is a FCOB LED strip with 100 addressable segments, five meters. Uh, every five centimeters is one segment. Uh, and here you can see, yeah, you can choose different effects and uh, you're done. And that's the end of my first electronics video. If you found it helpful, please leave a comment telling me what you'd like to see next.